Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2014 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so as per usual, we're going to take a read of the information. ISA or ESA is a sole proprietorship trading in hair products and accessories. Okay. For the year ended 30th April 2013, of the following transaction reports on ESA's business were provided. Let's just say the following information was provided, all right? So we're seeing a list of items here. We have gross income, fixtures and fittings, provision for depreciation on the fixtures and fittings, a delivery van, provision for depreciation on the delivery van, receivables or debtors, provision for, provision, sorry, for doubtful accounts or provision for bad debts, as some of you all know it, equipment, cash, bank, discounts received, okay, payables or creditors, rent paid, wages and salaries and utilities. Now there's some other information down here under a section called notes. We have inventories at 30th April 2013 were valued at 6590 So that's the closing stock. Let's see what else. A provision for doubtful, oh yeah, sorry, for doubtful accounts of 10% of outstanding receivables is to be allowed. Okay, so we're probably going to have to find that provision. Depreciation is to be provided for as follows. Fixtures and fittings, 10% by the straight line method. So that means we're just going to take 10% and multiply by the cost of the asset. Delivery van, 20% by the reducing balance method. So we're going to take 20% and multiply by the net book value of the asset. All right. Then we have annual rental cost, 6,000 and 200 was due for utilities. So that's an accrued expense. Let's take a look at the official requirements before we jump into the question. Okay, so they want us to do a few things. Prepare ESA's income statement, profit and loss account, for the year ended 30th April 2013. Then they want a calculation of the total value of ESA's current assets as at 30th April 2013. Show all working clearly. And last but not least, calculate the monthly rental amount. Well, that was just for one month, so maybe it is last at least. Okay, let's start work on that income statement, shall we? Okay, so normally we will jump into the list of balances or information looking for sales and open and stock and purchases and these things. But the thing is, the first item here is gross income, which means the entire trading section has already been done for us. So we actually are just going to start the income statement with that figure. So don't forget to head up ESA income statement for the year ended 30th April 2013. And again, the first figure is the gross income. Now, don't forget, don't jump straight to less expenses because it is quite possible that you are going to have some additional revenues that we need to add to gross profits or other income, whatever you choose to call it. So if we take a look, let's go straight to the item discount received. That's one of them. But there is another item that you should always check out just in case, which is the provision for doubtful accounts or provision for bad debts. So currently the balance for the provision for doubtful accounts is $500, but there was a, a note below. Do you remember the note and what it said? Let's take a look. It says that a provision for doubtful accounts of 10% of accounts of, sorry, of outstanding receivables is to be allowed. So 10% of outstanding receivables. Let's go up to the information and look for receivables. I'm seeing it right here, just above the provision for doubtful accounts. That says 3,200, 10% of which is 320. Now, is that more or less than the existing provision of 500? It's less, but by how much? Well, we'll simply have to find the difference between 500 and 320, which is $180. So the provision for doubtful accounts or provision for bad debts has to decrease. And as such, the amount of the decrease, the amount of the change will have to go in the income statement. And in this case, be added to gross profit. So let's put that here. Right, provision for doubtful let's decrease 180. And don't forget, we talked about the discount receipt of 3120. That's going to give us a total additional income of 3300, which when added to the 68,540 above, gives us 71,840 before we less expenses. So before we go any further, I'm going to put a link up there with a card that will carry you to a video showing how to treat specifically with this item, as in the provision for doubtful debts. It will show you what to do in the income statement if the provision increases and if the provision decreases. And I also think I show an example where the provision does not change, in which case there'll actually be no income statement adjustment. Okay, so let's go ahead with the expenses figures. 
So the first thing I put here was your rent expense of 6,000. So I know what you're saying, but Chris, it says in this list of balances, rent paid is 6,500. So why aren't we putting that? Because the amount paid is not necessarily what was incurred. In the income statement, we have to put, we have to calculate profit using revenues earned and expenses incurred, regardless of how much was received in the case of revenue or how much was paid in the cases of expenses. So if you paid too much or too little with respect to your expense, it does not matter in terms of the income statement figure. What goes in the income statement figure is the amount incurred. And guess what? We know how much the rent figure is for the year because it says right here, annual rental costs $6,000. So that figure is what goes inside of here because that is the annual rental cost, the annual amount incurred in respect of rent expense. So even though we paid $6,500, that, that doesn't matter because the amount incurred was $6,000. Now, the $6,500 means that we paid $500 extra above what was incurred. That's a prepaid expense. That's going to go in the current assets section in balance sheet. So we'll deal with that there. Let's move on and check out the next figure. So I have wages and salaries. So yes, yeah, so across in the list of balances, we're seeing wages and salaries, $18,000. So we plug that wholesale. Then I'm seeing a utilities figure here of 9,500. But if we look down, the very last item in the notes was that 200 was due for utilities. So that means that we have an accrued portion of the utilities expense. So what do we do with accrued items? We have to add them onto the figure from the information. So you'll see here 9,500 plus 200, giving us a total amount incurred of 9,700. Okay, so the next thing we have is the depreciation, fixtures and fittings. So I'm seeing 10% of 9,000. Let's discuss that. So if we go back across to the information, the notes, we're going to see specifically for depreciation that fixtures and fittings is to be depreciated 10% by the straight line method. So that means we're simply going to take the 10% and multiply that by the cost of the fixture. So if we go up in the information, we're going to see that fixtures and fittings is worth 9,000. Now it just says fixtures and fittings. So it doesn't say what it is, but we could say at least soon as the cost of the fixtures and fittings. The only other item inside the list of balances that has anything to do with fixtures and fittings is the item just below. And that is specifically labeled provision for depreciation on the fixtures and fittings. So we're just going to multiply 10% by the 9,000 because it is the straight line method of depreciation that we are using. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a card up there that will carry you to a video showing you how to deal specifically and only with the provision for depreciation in the income statement. And I'm going to show you using both methods, both the straight line method and the method I'm about to use now, which is the reducing balance method. And that will cover the provision for depreciation for the delivery van. Let's take a look in the notes and see what it says about the provision for depreciation on the delivery van. It says that delivery van is to be depreciated 20% by the reducing balance method. So that means we have to multiply 20% the depreciation rate by the net book value of the asset. How do we find net book value? Well, that's simply the cost of the asset, which in this case is 12,000, minus the existing provision for depreciation of 2,360. So that's going to be 20% of, of I think 9,640. Let's see what that turns out to be across here. Right, so you're seeing the working 20% of 12,000, the cost minus the existing provision of 2360. And when you find 20% of that, it turns out to be 1,928. Now that, that concludes the expense section. So that means our total expenses, when you add all the expenses together, you will get 36,528, which when subtracted from the figure up here, 71,840, will give us a net income figure of 35,312. Okay, so let's take a look at the next part of the question, shall we? All right, so what we are required to show here is simply a calculation of the value of current assets as of 30th April 2013. So if we take a look across in the information, we have a few things. I'm seeing the debtors, sorry, and the provision for doubtful debt, which of course we know is no longer 500, it's now 380. Equipment, no cash and bank, yes. Uh, discounts received, no creditors as a liability, rent paid. Don't forget, the rent paid was 6500 but we only incurred 6000 which means that we have a prepaid rent expense of 500 That's a current asset. Wages and salaries, no. Utilities had an accrued portion, but that's a current liability. 
And don't forget, we also had in the note section the inventory at end. So that's the closing stock. And as a matter of fact, that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with the inventory of 6590. Next, we're going to put the receivables of 3200. And don't forget, we're going to subtract 10% of the receivables value as the provision for doubtful debts. We also have the prepaid rent expense of 500. The bank figure was 5880. And the cash item was 300. And all we have to do is add all those figures together and we get the total value for current assets of 16,150. I think there's one more part of this question. Let's take a look. Okay, so it's said to calculate the monthly rental amount. Okay, so we know from the question that it says annual rental cost is $6,000. So that's for the whole year. How many months in a year? 12. So all we have to do is take the total annual rent amount, divide by 12, and we will get the monthly rental charge of $500. And that's about it. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one on the Jan 2014 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe, and be sure to check out my website, where you'll find some free PUA handouts that you might find useful. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.